So this is a video on how to make the most out of your Mamiya 645. You just got this machine, you're super hyped about it. It's everything you want it to be. You have gorgeous ground glass, amazing fast glass. It's compact, it's portable compared to other SLR medium format cameras, and you are ready to go shooting with it. Um, here are some things that I have done and I feel like help me make the most out of what my Mamiya 645 can do. So um, you probably have, um, your camera probably came with a 120 film insert and it just goes right into the back here and allows you to load up 120 film um, and shoot through it. And that's great, except as I'm sure you may know or will soon find out um, that the Mamiya 645 only gets 15 frames out of a roll of 120. And if you ever shoot uh, 120 film and you get the negatives back, you can see that the the uh, last um, bit of the film negative is completely blank and it seems like there's enough space um, in order to shoot that 16th shot except the Mamiya simply won't let you. Um, well, the way around that is to use a 220 insert. And the only difference mechanically that I've found between the 120 and the 220 insert is that um, the 220 insert has this wedge right here and the 120 doesn't and what that wedge does is that it engages with a little lever it just lifts up this little lever here on the inside of the camera um, I think if you really wanted to you could unscrew this and thread it onto here um, but really don't need to you can just shoot with the 220 insert and everything is hunky-dory the one thing that you have to remember is that um, the camera will think that you have 220 film so it won't stop after 16 shots you'll have to stop yourself after 16 shots so just keep an eye on your uh, your frame counter and you will be fine so the next thing that you may find yourself wanting to do is to shoot um, 35 millimeter film here is a just a roll of 35 mil. This is a, a practice roll, so the leader is wound all the way in. The bottom comes off. I, I use it to practice winding on spools for my developing tanks or for um, testing the film advances in cameras um, that are not tested yet. Um, and I like using this camera so much. I'm willing to haul it around to shoot my um, <laughs> to shoot my 35 millimeter. Um, just because I love using it. I love the lens. I love the ground glass. I love I love um, Just the whole process of having that camera with me um, And you may have seen that on eBay and Etsy and other usual suspects people are 3d printing these um, Film these uh, spacers so that you can just stick it around your 35 mil um, and you can pop it into a film insert such as this one and if you have a, uh, a spool on the other side, you can just wind it over onto the spool and you can shoot it in your 120 camera. Um, if you want to do this, there are a few things that I've found ha that have really helped. So the first thing is that your 35 millimeter film is much narrower than 120 film. So what I did is I cut myself a little piece of paper just with the width of 35 mil um, and so you can see my sprocket holes here and um, inside of my sprocket holes my actual image area there and what I do when I shoot 35 is I pop this right over my ground glass not under the ground glass that'll mess with your focus but over the ground glass just like that and pop the viewfinder back in and now you may not be able to see anything, um, but when I look through there, um, it masks off what will be and will not be covered by the image area of my 35 millimeter film. Um, and that has helped me a lot. Um, another thing is to use the 220 insert instead of the 120 insert. Um, the length of 220 is closer to the length of, um, of a 
36 exposure wool of 35 millimeter film, um, closer than, than 120 is. Um, so if I use the 220 insert, I'll just be able to keep firing and it won't stop me after a while and then have me waste the rest of the film. Um, another thing that I found that helps with getting every single shot out of my 35 mil is to use a, um, a dark bag. And what I do with the dark bag is I, if I'm like halfway through this, say I'm, um, my film counter says that I'm on, um, 25 frames or something. So it'll only let me take 30 frames, although I may be able to get a few more than 30 shots out of, uh, 36 exposure roll of 35. I will stick the whole camera with the film insert into the dark bag and I will, um, it's, it's kind of sketch, but the, uh, the film winder takes a while to reset. So, um, I will just kind of like grab it, pull it out and then pull it back in. And that'll normally bring me back a few frames. So maybe I'll be on like 12 or something. And then I can just keep on shooting and keep on winding until I feel the resistance at the end of the roll. And that's when I know that my, um, roll is finished. And the thing about shooting 35 is that it'll all be on the spool. Um, so I have to go back into the dark bag and then what I can do is I can just take this whole thing off and I will keep one of the converters on or one of the spacers on and I will just wind it, wind the whole thing back into the cartridge and film leader, film leader and all. Um, another thing that helps is that 120 film has all of that paper at the beginning before any, uh, before any film can be, um, can be exposed for an image. Um, so sometimes I'll, I'll, um, tape on a little strip of paper as well, just like notebook paper to the end. And normally it's about like, you know, this long or so, and that'll help me make sure that I'm shooting across my entire, um, exposable area, my entire, you know, usable area of, of 35 millimeter, millimeter film. One thing, um, which has taken me a really long time to figure out is that the 220 inserts and the 120 inserts, the medium format inserts have this roller here and it's a sprung roller um, and there's a big like rubber wheel on one side and it meshes into this cog on the other side and that interacts with the frame counter on the camera. If um, you just put in a regular spool, if you put in a regular spool, the camera will not think that you have film in or if it does, it won't think that your film is properly advanced. So what will happen is that you'll wind twice in between every shot and you will end up with um, 35 millimeter frames which are spaced really far apart. And I don't know if you can see this, I don't know if it's showing up, but there's like one there and then a giant space and then one there and then a space and then one there. And um, it will not think that um, the film is wound on. So it'll make you wind twice and you'll end up wasting a lot of film. Um, so what I have done is I have taken um, some paper and some electrical tape and I have just built up this portion of one of the spools, one of the uh, take-up spools, um, with just a bit of material to thicken it up. So now when I put it into the insert, it'll actually interact with that rubber wheel. So when I turn this spool, this, the wheel turns and this cog turns and the camera thinks that I have film in the camera, which I do. Um, and that tightens up your spacing. The size of how much this is built up is going to be something that you have to adjust with. If you get it too small, um, or too big, it may give you too much spacing or it may give you overlapping frames. Um, one thing that the camera is very good about doing is keeping your frame spacing consistent. Um, regardless of how much is wound on, and this is one of the ways that it does it. But since it's off here to the side, and it's not covered by the area of 35 millimeter film, um, that is something that the camera cannot do. So you'll have to strike that middle balance between not wasting too much film or and also not having overlapping frames. But fundamentally, that's how you shoot 35 millimeter. And if you make one of these take-up rolls, um, take up spools, just take a spool, throw that on, and you can keep it on and use it for all of your 35, and that's what I do, and everything works great. Now, here comes the big one that a lot of people have been asking about, um, is how to shoot in stacks many, 
And I think before you do this, you kind of have to ask yourself why, why you want to do this. Um, I want to do it because, to be honest, it's not that expensive compared to getting a roll of film, getting it developed, getting it scanned and everything. Um, although, if you, if you, like me, are doing your own scanning and you're developing, that math may be different. Um, but also, it's fun and you can maybe go, you know, hang out with some friends and have um, instant pictures. And I really like that aspect of it as well. I think it's also a really good learning opportunity because you can see the your picture instantly. So if something is off with your framing, if something off is off with your exposure, then you know and you have the automatic feedback and you don't have to wait way down the line when you've forgotten your settings, you've forgotten um, what the circumstances of a particular shot were. Um, and I think that as a learning tool for shooting film, medium format film, it's really useful. Um, but it is a challenge. So just be warned, this is the way that I have found to do it. Um, and if you want to do this, if you want to do anything I've talked about in this video, kind of do it at your own risk. Um, and don't come after me if you end up messing up your camera, even though I've been doing it for a while and I have not messed up my camera whatsoever. Um, so the film for Instax Mini comes in cartridges like this. And normally you open the back of the Mini and you can pop these guys in and you can go and you can shoot away and you have 10 shots. Um, the thing about Instax Mini Film is that the image area is almost identical to, it's only slightly larger than 645. So it would be perfect if you could shoot it in a 645 camera. Um, however, the issue with the Mamiya 645 in this case, the 1000S and also models like it is that it doesn't have interchangeable film backs. And if there were, you could probably just get a GIMP one. You could, you know, chop off the lens and stuff and then just have this, build this right into the back and make your life a whole lot easier. However, um, such is not the case. Um, and we have this other workaround. I found this other workaround instead. So what you are going to need to do is get yourself a 220 film back. You can also use a 120 film back. I like using 220 because they are cheap as chips. Uh, no one seems to want them anymore. You can pick them up for like 10 bucks on eBay um, because 220 film isn't made anymore. And what you're going to need to do is you're going to strip it down significantly. So I've moved, I removed everything here except for the, um, the little clip that holds it in here, this side, of the film and the pressure plate. So the rollers are gone, these things are gone, the springy rubber wheel is gone, um, this little spring and sprung is gone, um, and everything is gone. Um, and then what you're going to need to do once you get to this stage is that you're going to need to file this down, this side down pretty significantly of honestly like a few millimeters. Um, the reason for that is that um, Instax film has the developing chemicals. As an integral film, it has developing chemicals in this pouch. And if you don't do that and you just jam it in, you may puncture the pouch. And that is bad news because you'll get, you know, I mean, best case scenario, the chemicals go into the film. Worst case scenario, they spill out into your camera. And that could be an issue and a possible health hazard. Um, however, once you do this modification, you are not done. You will also need to remove some material from this other side of the pressure plate. Um, and basically the way that this will work is that you will need to go inside of your dark bag. You will need to um, have maybe your camera, you've got your film in it, you've got um, your, your modified 220 insert, and you've got your uh, Mamiya 645. You will need to open this, take out the film cartridge, and then remove one Instax mini frame. And and it's going to be like this because the, the back here is the light sensitive part. So I actually stuck it in wrong, but it doesn't matter. Um, so it's going to it's going to come out of the insert like this, and then you're going to need to navigate over to your modified 220 insert and you're gonna slide it into that crack there. Um, 
and just along that side. And what I've done is I've taken that tiny wheel connected to the the rubber ring and I actually just took a screw and I put that there as a stop. Um, so what I do in the dark, because all of this is in the dark bag, all of this is in the dark, um, you can slide it in until you feel that stop. And then you will need to carefully, carefully fold the film over and then hopefully free and clear of the pouch, fold it again, like so. Once you've gotten to this stage, um, you'll, have your, you'll have your camera, and you can insert it into the back of the camera. And you can feel the clips clip in, and what that will do is the pressure plate, hopefully, will hold the, um, the Instax mini film against the film plane. So the focus that you see from the ground glass should be in focus um, if you've done this correctly. And here the pouch on the side is unpunctured because you've given it a little extra room. Um, so we're not messing with that. And um, you are ready to close up the Mamiya 645. Make sure that your Instax Mini is closed and you can take everything out of the dark bag. Then you can go about your business, um, take your shot, um, at this point, you're going to want to be in mirror lockup um, because otherwise, it, if there's no film in it, if the camera doesn't detect film, it won't let you take a shot. So put yourself in mirror lockup here with the switch, um, and then you can do the winding, you can do the shooting, um, and then you will have to go back into the dark bag. Um, and once you're inside the dark bag, you can take the film insert out with your Instax Mini film in it, now exposed but undeveloped. Um, you will remove it from the 220 insert, the modified insert, and then you can open the back of the um, Fuji Instax Mini camera and you can grab the cartridge out. And this is critical, um, that you put it in the same orientation that it came out. So pouch up and um, the the front here, the area, the side that you shouldn't be exposing, you'll be able to feel this film border. Um, and on the back, you won't be able to. So make sure that you're feeling no film border here on the sides and the pouch is oriented up. Stick that in. And you can see here on my um, Instax Mini that I have the shutter taped up and I have the flash taped up for the reason that if I'm firing it, what I need to do next is fire it in the dark bag in order to eject the film. And if this isn't taped up, and if that's not taped up, I could be adding more light or another image or whatever on top of a double exposure, essentially. So just make sure those are covered up. You could also use your hand at this point. Um, but you take the shot and the rollers will eject the film out. Um, and then you just wait for your Instax mini shot to develop. Um, and that is fundamentally it. The reason why you can't just stick the film in like this and then throw in either a spacer or an insert or something is because the area um, on this side of the film is, is thicker than the inside of the um, film area for the Mamiya 645 will allow. So there's too much space here. And if you do that, you will end up with a shot like this, which I took upside down. Um, but you can see how much how much space there is. Is that the camera is trying to is trying to expose, and it's not able to get um, the entire exposed area onto the negative of the film to be developed. Um, this does take practice. Um, what'll happen? What what happened to me? Uh, quite a few times is that either I put it back into the insert wrong, and the pouch doesn't. Um, spread properly, you know, it, it comes out and I'm, and the pouch um, still has all the chemicals in it, which is what happened here where I tried to push it out with my fingers and you can see it just didn't work and you get results like this. Um, or things like this where um, it didn't go into the film correctly or where the film didn't get exposed correctly and those are no good. Um, if you practice and you try for a while, eventually you will be able to get a result like this, which is where all four corners of the film are exposed on the Instax Mini, and that's what we're aiming for. And um, a lot of it will probably come down to practice, um, because it is difficult to, well, 
difficult. It's tricky to to be able to navigate, you know, this maneuver um, inside of the um, inside of the dark bag and be able to do everything properly inside of the dark bag all the while like trying to not touch this side of the film as much as you can but that doesn't always happen um, oh um, one more thing which I forgot to mention is that if let's say you want to take a vertical picture like this the this method will only allow you to insert the film in one way right so if the the insert goes in here and um, if the insert goes into the camera like this and you have the pouch on that side, it will only be able to go in this way. Um, if you want to take a vertical picture, what you need to do, what you will want to do is think like, oh, well the pouch is on this side, then I must have to hold my camera like this. Um, however, remember that the image gets flipped around. So if you want to take a vertical picture with the wide part of the image facing down, you'll actually need to hold it like this. So it'll be the other way around. But yeah, that is fundamentally it. And that is how I have managed to make the most out of my beloved Mamiya 645.